and welcome back to the second session of our Microtik hardware series. Today, we're going to continue our review of Microtik Ethernet routers, and in this session, we're going to introduce to you the RB2011 family, ranging in price from $99 up to $119. The RB2011 series includes five indoor Ethernet routers, including two IL, one ILS, and two UIAS items. These products go by their product codes, and unlike the HEX family, they do not have any specific market name. Moreover, the RB2011 products do not follow Microtech's product naming rules, as we'll now see. The first product in this group is the RB2011 IL-IN. The number 2011 in the product code of all these items refers to the year 2011, in which these routers were first made. The small i refers to the router's single port power injector without controller, and the capital L stands for light edition, indicating a cheaper RB2011 item with lower performance features. Moreover, the letters IN at the end of the product code show that this device is an indoor desktop router. The next product, the RB2011 IL-RM, is identical to the previous item, and the only difference is the rack mount enclosure of this hardware shown by the letters RM in the product code. The third item in the RB2011 family is the RB2011 ILS-IN, and the capital S in its naming indicates that this device enjoys the availability of one SFP port. The fourth item, the RB2011 UIAS-IN, also enjoys a USB port, as illustrated by the capital U in its name. Furthermore, the capital A in this product code shows that this item either has a greater memory or comes with a higher OS license level. And finally, the fifth product in the RB2011 series is the RB2011 UIAS-RM, which again is identical to the previous hardware but comes with a rack mount enclosure. Microtech has another RB2011 device as well, the RB2011 UIAS-2HND-IN. However, since this hardware has wireless capabilities, it is listed in the wireless for home and office category, so we'll discuss it in a future video. Among the five RB2011 items in this video, one of the first differences that sets the two UIAS items apart is the existence of a small LCD on each device that provides useful performance information at a glance. Moreover, as mentioned in the product codes, each UIAS device comes with a Type A USB port. Considering device specifications, these devices are quite similar and we can compare the performance of the three desktop items to find out more. As you can see, all three devices have five 10100 ports as well as 5 gigabit ports, and their CPU information is identical. The advantage, however, goes to the UIAS version. As you can see, it is the only certified device among these three. It has a passive fan count, as well as the IP20 international protection code. Being the only device among the three with a USB port, the UIAS version has a max USB current of 2 amperes, and it only has one-third the maximum power consumption of the other two devices. And without attachments, its max power consumption comes down to zero. Further down the comparison table, you have the existence of one USB port for the UIAS version, as well as a temperature monitor and a level 5 OS license compared to the level 4 license of the other two devices. You can refer to the OS license menu of the Microtech Wiki and compare the limits and features of level 4 and level 5 licenses for better understanding the prices and all the capabilities of each license level. Going back to the specifications table, you can see that both the ILS and the UIAS versions, which have an SFP port, support SFP DDMI. DDMI stands for Digital Diagnostics Monitoring Interface which is used to establish a real-time link between the router and the SFB transceiver. And finally, 
We can see in this table that the UIAS version also supports an RJ45 serial console port, has twice the RAM size of the other two items, and also comes with a voltage monitor. Two resources that are quite important for a lot of Microtech products can be found in the support and downloads table. The first one is the product's block diagram, which plainly shows you how the different ports and peripherals of a product work. For instance, for the RB2011 family, the 5 gigabit Ethernet ports numbered 1 to 5 are connected to the CPU via a gigabit switch, whereas the 5 10100 ports connect to the CPU via an integrated 100 megabit switch. As a result, the throughput for these two port groups is different, and therefore we cannot expect the speed results of ports 6 to 10 to be the same as those of ports 1 to 5. The second important resource to look at is the SFB compatibility list, which for devices that come with an SFB port gives you detailed tables that show you the compatibility status of different Microtech devices with various SFB modules. In terms of test results, similar to the HEX series, the RB2011 products give different throughputs based on different packet sizes, modes, and router configurations. As previously mentioned, bear in mind that these speed tests are based on all 10 Ethernet ports, so the numbers that you see in this table are not for each port but actually divided between all 10 gigabit and megabit ports of your device. Now, as a small detour, if we refer back to the test results of HEX, you can see that HEX yields better performance in comparison with RB2011 UIAS. Given this difference in performance, Let's take a look at an example device selection. The RB2011 UIAS-IN is priced at 119 US dollars. It has gigabit and megabit ports, as well as one USB and one SFB port. Now, if you put together the hex with an RB260GS switch, you will have an equally capable setup, complete with USB and SFB ports as well as hardware encryption features for just under 100 US dollars. Therefore, when selecting a device for our network, we should always ask ourselves some important basic questions. Starting with the type of usage. Are we simply going to browse the net and answer a few emails, or do we expect something more? How many simultaneous users are going to be active on our network? What is the average size and number of packets being transmitted? And indeed, what speed is our service provider giving us on our network? The industries that can benefit from the RB2011 hardware family include the education industry and IT service providers. Also, customers of ISPs and wireless ISPs that have a low bandwidth can benefit from these devices. Similarly, VoIP service providers, manufacturers, system integrators, and surveillance services who have limited network traffic can also use RB2011 items in their networks. Event organizers and public camping sites can also utilize RB2011 hardware series. However, they should always keep an eye on their number of users and make sure their hardware setup can manage their ongoing traffic. Based on their features, the RB2011 items are suitable for internet hotspots, content filtering, as well as firewall and security configurations. Moreover, they are very capable and useful hardware for network management training centers and classes. And also, they are one of the many Microtech items that can be fully customized through the white labeling process to serve you as your own tailor-made items. However, given their lack of encryption features, we do not recommend using the RB2011 items for VPN configurations, especially site-to-site -site VPN connections. Many thanks for watching this video. We hope you found our content useful and to your liking. If you have any suggestions, please leave us a comment or get in touch with us on our website. Hope to see you all in the next video. Take care and goodbye.